Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Alfa Romeo Giulia, courtesy of Faulkner Alfa Romeo in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because there are some massive changes for the 2024 Giulia, including new styling, new headlights, new taillights, new gauge cluster, just to name a few. So exciting stuff there. And for anyone who's curious, you do get a 40-year, 50,000-mile bumper-to-bumper and powertrain warranty with all Alfa Romeos, and one year or 10,000 miles of complimentary maintenance then as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2024 Julia. First one being the Sprint starting at $42,480. You got the TI starting at $45,020. The Competizione for $53,270. And the Veloce for $48,780. And there is no way I could say those names without throwing an Italian accent over top of it. Sorry, I just can't. But anyways, that was all pricing for the rear wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, simply add $2,000 dollars than to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the julia is going to be the same powering the beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 280 horsepower at 5200 rpm 306 pound feet of torque coming in at 2000 rpm power sent to rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with some gigantic paddle shifters absolutely massive zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.4 seconds top speed in case you were interested 149 miles per hour that's respectable with FPG numbers coming in at 24 in the city 33 on the highway for the rear wheel drive 23 in the city 31 on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in our Julia do want to mention to you guys the drive modes and so there's a little circular dial labeled DNA very clever name because it actually does stand for something dynamic neutral and advanced so those are the drive modes they will adjust things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now have I got all of that out of the way what do you say let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters here first I'm going to slide the shifter all the way to the back into the left that is going to give me full control over the shifting and let's go ahead and find a straightaway and let's test out how quickly these massive paddle shifters are actually going to react for us here all right so first test i'm doing right now with the paddle shifters is i'm leaving it in first gear and not shifting because i just want to see if it's going to shift for me and it is not so well done alfa romeo for that a lot of vehicles will actually shift for you so here we go let's test out the paddle shifters in three two one go huh, there it is yeah, baby. <laughs> they are fun. They're dang quick. Now, we'll say there was a little bit of turbo lag there at the beginning, but as for the paddle shifters, they are brilliant, man, and they are absolutely gigantic, and I like that too. So they did a wonderful job with the paddle shifters, but anyways, let's not give back full control to the Julia here. I'm going to slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the right, and let's go ahead and find yet another straightaway, and let's let the car do all the work, and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed in that dynamic driving mode. All right, let's have a little fun with this one. A little bit around the bend. We're going to do this acceleration in three, two, one, go. From a standstill. Turbo leg. Oh, there it is. Ooh, these headrests are soft. <laughs> Baby. Man, once it kicks in, it really kicks in, man. Like 0 to 60 and 5.4, that is quick. But having said that, there is a little bit of turbo lag at the beginning. Alfa Romeo, maybe, I don't know if you thought of this before, maybe you have, but maybe a mild hybrid system wouldn't, you know, wouldn't hurt this thing. It gives a little more initial punch on demand there, kind of like an electric car would. It probably would give a little better MPGs, not that the MPGs are bad in this thing, but it could probably help on both fronts. But yeah, there is a little bit of turbo lag, but once it kicks in, man, it's like having a Honda. Once VTEC kicks in, you're going, son, but this is a lot better than a Honda. I'm just saying. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find four-wheel ventilated disc brakes coming standard. And as far as that 60 stopping distance goes, that's going to come in at 130 feet, which isn't the best number on paper. 
but honestly it does kind of feel like that it is a little bit softer of a braking feel for whatever reason i would have expected a little bit more firmness to the braking feel a little more bite to it and 60 to zero on this car should be like 115 100 to 115 to 120 feet that's what i would be looking for because that's more of a sports today and braking number but according to motor trend it's 130 and that's more like an SUV number. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes, as we are driving over some rocks right now. When I was on the road, it was plenty fine. So absolutely no issues there. Steering feels 100% on the heavier side of things. So definitely appreciate that. It instantly points you in the direction that you wanna go. So they did an amazing job with the steering feel. As far as cabin noise goes, that was perfectly fine. And my little short test drive that I had there. So now as I pulled up to the park i'm about to do the exterior part of this but touching on visibility it's okay i can see perfectly fine out my rear view mirror there so rear visibility is perfectly fine and actually rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the julia as well in terms of forward visibility so whenever it detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so just one less thing you got to worry about it's kind of like automatic headlights so big fan of that as well but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior because there are plenty of changes to our 2024 alfa romeo julia all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 alfa romeo julia finished in vesuvio gray metallic I swear all these italian words are driving me nuts but anyway speaking of let's go ahead and start this one with where the alfa romeo julia is made taking a look at the vin first character is the letter z indicating that this one is built and assembled in Italy as expected but again this has been completely refreshed for the 2024 model year you got a refreshed front fascia with new grille inserts refreshed headlight housings as well it kind of has this tri LED effect on both sides so I think it looks absolutely amazing you do get full LED headlights by the way so both low beam and high beam with LED daytime running lights get the automatic feature as well meaning when it starts to get dark at night the headlights will turn on automatically for you there you also have this of course amazing Alfa Romeo logo up front so in case you were curious about that Alfa Romeo was founded in Milan Italy it contains the cross of the municipality and the Visconti serpent on the right there so in case you were curious about the background history of the Alfa Romeo logo there you go but overall definitely a very good looking front end but it pretty much rounds out the front now go ahead and check out the side of the Julia. All right, so we're now making our way to the side of this one. Matte black or gloss black window surrounds, depending upon the uh, trim level that you go with. You also have that trim level badging found on the front fenders. You guys can see that Veloce found on the front fenders there, so that's pretty cool. Power adjustable gloss black side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turd signals as well, so I like that. Take a look down to the wheel setup. 17 by 7.5 inch aluminum alloys for the Sprint. 18 by 8 inch aluminum alloys for the TI and then 19 by 8 inch aluminum alloys for the Veloce and Competizione. Gosh darn it with these words. But anyways, I love the design of these wheels. It definitely looks Italian without a doubt. So love the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now making our way to the back of this one. Gloss black shark fin antenna found all the way to the top. That Q4 badging, by the way, that is going to be the all-wheel drive configuration. That indicates that it's got all-wheel drive, basically. Got the Alfa Romeo logo yet again. Redesigned LED taillights, of course, and they are super bright right absolutely love the look of that you do have a gloss black rear diffuser you guys can see that towards the bottom there and that's for the veloce and the competizione so i like that as well that definitely looks good and of course probably my favorite part of the back end here integrated dual exhaust outlets with dark tips and i love how they're integrated into the rear bumper i love that look it looks absolutely amazing but as always I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here is that exhaust clip So, but now since we are around to the back of the Julia, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob, but of course there is a button on the trunk itself as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.4 cubic feet. Then of course, if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, there's a teeny bit of in-floor storage there in the middle, I guess you could say, but just the spare tire essentially. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 35.1 inches. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. There is rear ventilation for the rear passenger so i absolutely love that you don't always get that even the luxury vehicles with the size of this vehicle so big fan of that there is a rear center armrest with cup holders as well you got some rear charging ports and best part of the rear seats get ready 
heated rear seats for every single trim level across the board, not just our Veloce. It's literally every single trim, so I gotta love that. But then make our way up to the front seats, power adjustable front seats with four-way power lumbar, leather seating coming standard, heated front seats coming standard. As far as seat comfort goes, it was brilliant. Reason being is because the seats are plenty adjustable and the headrest. The headrest, again, some of the most comfortable headrests that I've tested out in a while. It's like BMW and Mercedes headrests, essentially. They're like pillows, little pillows with the Alfa Romeo crest on them, so wonderful. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is gonna be leather wrapped for all trim levels with those gigantic paddle shifters just behind there. As far as the startup goes, let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your cool Alfa Romeo crest on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate, the Alfa Romeo lettering at the bottom, and then the times two button that is going to be a remote start also coming standard but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located on the steering wheel so much different than 99 percent of the cars out there so i'm just going to put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button and so when it comes to the gauges there is a new 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that does come standard on this one and i absolutely love it so definitely looks good up there and i will say the colors change slightly as well when you change up the drive mode so you got that as well so in that dynamic mode it's a lot more sportier of a look than when you put it in the uh, neutral mode it's kind of just some gray hues and so on so i like that it changes depending upon the drive mode so that definitely looks good giant digital readout front and center speedometers all the way to your left tachometers on your right gives you your uh, speed limit recognition at the very top there how many miles you have left until you hit empty so they're digital gauges it basically is everything you could possibly want up there but now let's go ahead and take a look at overall interior quality and let me actually start with dual zoom climate control does come standard across the board got this awesome power moonroof up top here so i absolutely love that it looks like we do have led interior lighting as well big fan of that also love these aluminum speaker covers it looks like it says Harman Kardon on it so we'll be testing out that sound system in a little bit here got some contrast stitching on the doors as well just in front of the shifter you have a little bit of rubberized storage dual cup holders i like the silver kind of texturized finish surrounding the shifter and all these buttons here that's definitely very nice they could have left out like a matte black plastic or a matte gray plastic but they put a design to it so big fan of that you got your wireless phone charger just behind there and within the center armrest got a bunch of papers apparently but teensy bit of storage in there honestly not that much storage at all but you do have a couple charging ports and an auxiliary port in there as well so overall it's pretty practical it's pretty to the point it looks like an auto dimming rear view mirror as well so it'll definitely get the job done i don't have any issues with that but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen you're going to find an 8.8 .8 inch color touchscreen display bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay you got a factory navigation system so quite a bit up there climate control settings up there as well and of course your radio information so when it comes to the sound systems you will find eight speakers with the sprint ti and veloce however for the competizione you will find a 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system that is going to be optional on the Veloce. So for this particular option, it's called the Premium Interior and Sound Package. It goes for $2,225. So that's how we got it here with us today. So I think I'm going to enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah, that's plenty fine. Yeah, ton of bass, ton of clarity. The clarity was crystal clear. That's an amazing sound system. It takes me back to my rave days in Italy or eating pizza or something. That was amazing. Anyways, last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Julia in reverse, oh my gosh, you will find a rear view camera, but very low resolution rear view camera though, letting you know what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, blind spot monitoring system, forward collision mitigation, and front and rear parking sensors as well so it's going to beep at you if you get too close to something which is a good thing and so when it comes to my final thoughts of the alfa romeo giulia if you want a rare car made in italy that's not a ferrari check out the Julia because that's what it is. But anyways, excellent design as well. I love the refresh. I think it looks absolutely amazing. And let me know what you guys think of it in the comments section below. 
Uh, I would have loved to have seen an adaptive damping suspension on this one. Kind of surprised that I didn't see it. That would have added a, a little extra ride quality to this thing. And a lot of other luxury cars will give you that in its class. So would have liked to have seen that. But as far as room for improvement goes, it's not particularly known for its reliability. Um, check out consumer reports for that. And maybe that's going to change this year. I don't know. It could, I guess. And I also would have minded seeing some nice ambient lighting. I think some red ambient lighting would look dang good in here to match this red leather, red nap leather seating that we have in this one so overall i thought this thing was dang fun though so let me know what you guys think of it feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold oh,